rendition of the song, but this is Orange Cassidy's song. The champ is in fact here. He's got the backpack. He's got the old jazz board, and he is ready to go kicking things off for his here European rounds. And look at that, look at that serious face. Look at that dog pop. Incredible. A flattest. Good enough for the champion. And look at the, do you see the wrist strength? The, the, the uh, wrist strength of Orange Cassidy. That could play a, play a factor later on. Man, she is killing it on this blue. I'm not sure if we can call it shredding when it's on the flute, but this might be the shredding equivalent. As the champ makes his entrance into the ring, rolling in slowly. Referee Bryce Rinsberg is going to be in charge of this. He does have some experience in his past with European rounds matches. And look at that beautiful new independent wrestling championship. Absolutely, we saw that emerge from the dance floor last night at Beyond Wrestling. And in the background, if you notice, sitting on the stage, all by lo his lonesome, taking center stage when he was not asked to, I might add. MJF, Maxwell Jacob Freeman holding that limitless title. He, of course, is the number 10 contender for the IWTV title. Do you think he purchased all of those seats by chance? Um, just so he didn't have to be around to all the, the gross humans of independent wrestling, not TV. His words, not mine. It's not out of the question. <laughs> not out of the question at all. And already, introducing the first, the challenger in the corner to my right, from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 177 pounds, the octopus, Jonathan Gresham. Former champion Jonathan Gresham introduced first here to this crowd in Jersey City. His opponent to my left makes his 11th title defense of a 94 day reign. Hailing from wherever, his weight doesn't matter. He is the current reigning and defending independent wrestling Television champion, freshly squeezed, Orange Cassidy! Dylan Hales, this is a monumental occasion. This is the very first time the Independent Wrestling.tv Championship is being defended in New Jersey, making 13 overall states and commonwealths that title's been defended in. But will that be lucky or unlucky 13 that's for a OC? That's a great question. Of course, this is also the first match taking place in the collection. The first match as part of this Mania Weekend experience, if you will, here at White Eagle Hall in Jersey City, New Jersey. So we're kicking things off with a bang with a title match, and a title match, like you said, that is, in fact, monumental. Of course, Orange Cassidy has, has brought that title to a variety of new places, new promotions, uh, new states. He was just recently in First Wrestling Unannounced in Minnesota, of course, first debuting here recently with IWTV. And now, things are going to kick off. For those who don't know, the European Rounds format is not a... I mean, it is a sort of traditional pro wrestling format, but not a traditional American pro wrestling format. So you've got six perspective rounds. They will each go five minutes in duration. Two pinfalls or two submissions will win you this whole thing. Uh, could, in fact, go to a draw. If it goes to a draw, of course, Orange Cassidy retains the title. A knockout, which is a 10 count down. The old boxing rule can also stop the match. And referee Bryce Rims Rimsberg can issue public warnings. If you see a yellow card comes out that comes out of his pocket, like in soccer, it's for an egregious foul, maybe an eye poke, uh, perhaps even a closed fist. It is to a degree at his discretion. Two of those come out, it's a DQ. So keep all of that in mind as we watch this matchup unfold here. Round system on the way. The first round about to get underway. This one's underway, and I think a lot of people come to this match thinking that the European rules favor the more, let's say, traditional wrestler that Jonathan Gresham is. Oh, I don't think there's any question. I mean, for people who are familiar with sort of European round system and some of the wrestlers that come out of it, you do see some eccentric grapplers that have come out of that universe, Les Kellett, Kendo Nagasaki, people like that. So it's not unheard of for somebody like Orange Cassidy to be successful there. But most of them are people that are more in the vein stylistically of a Jonathan Gresham. Those traditional rules really do play to his advantage, and he is oftentimes thought of as being the best technical wrestler in all of pro wrestling. It's an interesting technique. Uh, some of that strong wrist strength we saw on display on that earlier fist bump. You got that right. Is he? 
I'm not sure if he's trying to lure Gresham to the canvas or pull himself up. Well, that, I mean, that's, I think, to Orange Cassidy's strength. Is you never know what that guy's doing. And you got to keep in mind, another aspect of European rounds, of European rounds rule system is Gresham could not throw, say, an elbow drop there. That's illegal. A, hmm. a, a follow-up strike to a downed opponent is technically against the rules. So you can play with that a little bit more defensively if you're on the mat. That's something to keep your eyes on and your ears open for as this matchup continues. Oh, the hands have gone in the pockets, Kevin. You know what that means. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> this, uh, things have picked up. Business, if you will. <laughs> I don't know if Orchesi really does business, per se. Nice rolling snap there, but uh, no real damage inflicted. It was well executed. Not sure it did any good. Uh, another one, really, to no effect whatsoever. Doesn't even appear to rattle the champ, but his glasses fell off. The sunglasses came off and... But power, Bryce Rams, we're putting it back on. No ill intent. Going to be interesting to see what sort of feeling out process you have. Got to remember, they're on a clock right now. This is a, a, a five-minute round. So realistically, uh, you know, this time-killing strategy, it works in the favor of the champion. Because if there's not a fault, there's not a submission, he can run out the clock on this thing. This thing could go the first full 30 minutes, and he wins it with nothing happening. Oh, no. You better give those back. I've seen what happens when competitors take off his glasses and he does not get them back. He, all right, yeah. all right, all right. Here we go. They're back on, but they're low on the bridge of the nose. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh. Gresham rolls through. I'm, went for a jackknife. No, into a sunset flip. Cassidy still got those glasses on. He let his guardian for a second. It looked like, you know, so many of his matches recently have about, been about keeping those hands in the pocket, that strategy that he employs that kind of psychs out his opponents. He let that strategy drop there to go for a cover. Shows you that he's serious about trying to win this thing. And, and maybe we'll see a, a little bit more of a crafty edge. I, I personally think Orange Cassidy is an extremely crafty pro wrestler, but we may be seeing something even a little bit different for him in this match. The rule set may be taking him out of his comfort zone a little bit. Well, I don't know. I mean... Like you said, craftiness has gotten into double-digit title defenses, something that Jonathan Gresham didn't get to on his reign as the inaugural champion. That's a great point. I mean, Orange Cassidy's the most fighting champion we've ever had at IWTV. It's pretty remarkable. I mean, that, it's an absolute fact. As insane as that may sound to some people, the, the evidence is that, man, that shoulder tackle really got him. Oh. Oh, my God. We may have to do some impact testing after that. Bryce Wemsberg may call this round. We have a medic on hand. Nice. Oh. So talk of into the corner. Oh, he evades contact there. Uh, okay. Gresham's mesmerized by whatever Orange Cassidy is uh, looking to do. Yeah, he slipped at the back door and went for a leg trip. Cassidy was able to avoid it. Now we've got a, a shoulder tackle. Oh, Whoa. look at that. Tuck through. Oh, hold on. He's got him. Oh, my cradle. Man. Two. Oh, that's it. That's round one! That's a wrap of the first fall! Unbelievable. Orange Cassidy up one fall over. If Gresham had struck Orange Cassidy, that could have been a disqualification. That match would have been over. Bryce intercepted it. This match will continue, but Orange Cassidy up one fall. That is... Winner of the first round, Orange Cassidy! Yeah, I laid out there for a second. Rich Pal Paladino fall. can make the, uh, a, a uh, the uh, effective ruling there. That's it. That fall counts. And, and we're in a situation now where any other... <laughs> Did he win, he asked. He's still a little confused <laughs> about those round system and how they work, I think. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, like, didn't you... Didn't uh, independentwrestling.tv have to publish the rules of this match room because he asked what is the European rounds rules yeah, like and, a day before and, and, the match happened? In fact, happened? I will peel back the curtain a little bit. I had to research and write that myself wow. over at IWTV News. And uh, the champ was definitely confused. He, I think he thought it was a fruit. That was the impression I got from oh. our conversation. Oh, Perhaps a biscuit. But he's he's up one to nothing in this format against Jonathan Gresham. That's got to take Gresham to a weird place mentally. Definitely, by, He's definitely taken off guard, definitely taken by surprise, I'd say. Yeah, wait a minute. He's uh, perhaps looking to escalate things. Oh, oh, come on. Now that, I can say with certainty, was an error. That was unsportsmanlike, but not illegal. That's not public warning worthy, so to speak. Uh, Somebody... Uh. <laughs> At least he got him back. Who knows what kind of condition they're in, though. 
White Eagle Hall's pretty nice. I think I'd eat, probably eat something off the floor here at this juncture. Maybe not after the interspecies show later on tonight. But. I, I do wonder how many sunglasses are, are he's rocking in that Jan Sport. He's got to have backups, yeah. That is uh, the technique on that headlock is not ideal. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You know, sometimes, sometimes this stuff I do think is strategic, and sometimes I just think he's a little. Maybe lazy is the word. It's so hard to tell. It's so hard to reconcile those two sides of Orange Cassidy sometimes. And look at MJF in the background just looking on intently, kind of shaking his head in contempt. Oh, nice headlock takeover. But look at that. When it's gone to the mat, so shock. Oh, well, I started to say Gresham has yet to have an advantage. And as I say that, we get a nice leg scissors there. And he is in control of the champion, Kevin. Well, I wonder if... if you Losing that first fall to Orange Cassidy really had something click in his brain. I think he maybe figured this might be a little easier than he anticipated, having such an advantage given the rules. That may in fact be true. I mean, we, you oftentimes talk about a champion's advantage. I didn't think there was one in this match because of the rule set. Now there certainly is, though, because he's up a fall. But how do you, how do you think Jonathan Gresham feels being the inaugural champion, coming back here and seeing someone of Orange Cassidy's ilk? carrying the title around in a backpack, no less. It's probably a little bit frustrating for him. I mean, realistically, he's got, but here's the issue. He's got to come back now and win two straight, and the clock's working against him. That's right. Because we're already in the second fall here. So he's, not only is he racing the clock and the lethargic wrestling style of Orange <laughs> Cassidy, he's also a fall behind. That is a terrible position to be in in a match like this. Look at that. It's like a, like a almost a, a cross-armed nerve hold of sorts. Well, and that's the thing is, is uh, that was an, uh, an unusual move from Gresham and an even more unusual way to escape it. Absolutely. Oh, another mare. Drops the end of straight cover. Nice lateral press. Shoulder up. Oh, he traps the arm. <laughs> Every time he traps one arm, the other comes up and... Yeah, Gresham is... He's surrendering. He knows now's not the time. Well, he also knows in that position, what's he, what can he do? If this was a different sort of match, we talked about how he had the advantage theoretically on the match. If this was a different sort of match, he could throw an elbow there. He could, he could stomp him. He cannot legally do that in this match, Kevin Ford. And he's already down a fall, but now he's in control with this full Nelson. Orange Cassidy trying to pull the pressure down. Oh, look uh, at that escape. He's out. Just little, like that. Little razzle dazzle there. That was almost Johnny Saint esque. Gresham back to that full Nelson. Cassidy try, maybe going for that same technique again, but he also lowered his center of gravity. No, into a waist lock. That's very really smart. Very, very wise of Gresham. Yeah. Oh, oh, may, oh, is he going for the octopus? He, that's, he's got to be real careful. That is not where you want to be. You do not want to have your leg grapevine ever in a stand up position. No, that's, that's the reason that, you know, that move carries his namesake. Oh, he's got the pockets. He's got the pockets and the shimmy and the shake. Through. Oh, victory roll, one, two. That match is almost over right there, man. That would have been it in two falls. I mean, that would have been a wrap, which I think would have stunned everyone in attendance here in Jersey City, New Jersey. I don't think anybody would have expected it to end that way. It did not, but I am stunned at the, I don't know what else to call it other than the poise <laughs> of the champion in this sure. position. As he rolls around. Yeah. That's, that's his full cardio day right there. I say, it must be hard to be champion when you're perpetually exhausted. Nice wrist lock. Going after that strong fist bumping hand. <laughs> He's weaving him around. Just, oh, wow. Takes him over with a nice arm drag. And then, dude, that's almost a. <laughs> he did not. He's no, trying he to, did not. He's trying to work the refs here, I think. That's an interesting strategy. Of course, it is, that has worked on Bryce exactly one time before. Sometimes that one head fake, though. You never know. Is that? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Second round is ended. That is it. Round's ended. No public warnings issued yet. No, no. Okay. Fighters each get a... You get one public warning. A second one will get you DQ'd. But Gresham did not take kindly to that at all. Oh, no, no, no. Now that, yeah, that is a public warning. That's yeah. in between falls. That would have actually been a legal strike were this 
during the actual match. First public warning from referee Bryce Remsburg. Now again, there's a rest period between rounds. The bell has to ring again for the next round to start. That did not happen, so that strike was illegal by Gresham. Kevin Ford, look at Orange Cassidy's face. Oh, so not only is he getting a public warning, but he has made the champion angry. Yeah, so now if he gets another public warning, he's done. If he, get, if he loses another fall, he's done. We're in the third round now. He is really in a bad position. Gresham, the challenger, is at an extreme disadvantage here. And we got a pissed off champ. Picking up the pace is an understatement for he's the way Orange Cassidy's there moving. There must have been pulp in the, in the OJ this morning. Up and over. Oh, nice Rana. Follows in. Gresham goes up. The thing about picking up the pace is Gresham is somebody who can keep up with that pace. Yeah, and he may have just targeted that arm. Oh, yep, yep. And do a hammerlock. Oh, he's going for the octopus. Went for it again. Oh, no, he's Talks going for the mousetrap. Oh, my God. Mousetrap, two. Like, oh, oh, got him. Let's wait for the official word. Winner of the second fall and the match, and still the independent wrestling television champion, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy!